Welcome everyone to our Jump In series and we are studying the Beatitudes, a sermon on the Mount preached by Jesus Christ and there are eight Beatitudes and we have done seven and today is the final one. Let me quickly go through with you. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 starting from verse 3 up to verse 12 Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And today, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets of all. When you think of this last beatitude, that God says you are going to be blessed no matter how people treat you, when you think of the eight Beatitudes, all that Jesus taught us was to be loving and kind and pure in heart and in our thoughts towards people. He dealt with our inward attitude towards other people and he pronounced blessing upon us. God blesses us so that we can become a blessing. And so how can we be persecuted when we are being nice and we are following the words of Jesus Christ. Why would people want to persecute us? And the Bible is very clear about why we are being persecuted. So, I hope this study will help you. To be persecuted means to be harassed, to be treated in an evil manner, an unfair manner, insulted and abused, vicious speeches, false accusations and lies. He pronounced this blessing. It is not that we are persecuted, but why we are persecuted. He said, for righteousness sake. That means not because we have done anything wrong, but because of righteousness sake. The fact that you are now living out a narrow view of the kingdom of God is narrow to the world. You are so narrow minded, they say. And you are associated with Jesus. Now, when you face negative repercussions because you adhere to those values, you have chosen to associate with the kingdom of God. All right? So don't sit down and sulk and feel sorry for yourself. You are on the winning team. He said you are blessed. Twice he pronounced the blessing upon those who are persecuted. We think of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are living in countries. We pray for them and we consider them heroes who have to go through hostile conditions because of their faith in Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yes, all those who desire to live godly lives will suffer persecution. Does that mean that if we are not persecuted, could it mean that we are not living godly lives month after month, year after year, no negative repercussions because of your faith. That could mean that my faith is not being seen clearly and demonstrated clearly. Am I a secret Christian? You see, the demonstration of the kingdom of God, we value those system of righteousness and we associate with Jesus Christ. And it will definitely be seen in our lifestyle, in our choices that we make in the places that we work and live, it will be demonstrated very clearly. So when you and I have been clearly Christian, not because we are spewing out and preaching Bible verses to them or acting holier than thou. No, definitely not. But because the value system of the kingdom of God are my system and your system. You don't try to be a problem, man. You are going to be a problem. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4, For in fact, I told you before, when we were with you, that you will 
suffer tribulation, just as it has happened to you. If you're representing Christ and you're going to have problems, if you're going to be insulted, lies will be spewed against you, and people will try to make you, you know, lose on every situation because of your value system in Christ. If that is not happening, if people don't get rustled about you and annoyed about you being a Christian, maybe Christ is dead in our witness, not manifested in the way that he should. I'm not saying be unkind to people in our words and in our actions, definitely not. And I think many Christians who get persecuted for the wrong reasons, they ought to repent. But if you are persecuted for righteousness sake, if the negatives is associated with my value system, because you kept a higher standard, a God standard. Now you might say, how is that a blessing? How is it a blessing when I am persecuted? Jesus told us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Turn on your praise. Don't sulk, don't sulk and, and have a pity party. He says twice in verses 10 and 11. In verse 12, he says, I want you to rejoice and be glad even though they are mocking you and lying about you. I want you to put up your hand and praise God. When you are unwilling to compromise your standard and your love for God, and you are being looked down on, smile, for great is your reward in heaven and on earth. Let me tell you what else, a great reason you can smile and be glad, even though all these negatives are coming against you. He said, this is the kingdom of heaven, not only when we go to heaven, but the kingdom of heaven, heaven will overrule anything that happens on earth. Yes. Where there's a king and there's a kingdom and you are involved in that kingdom, let me tell you, God rules. Man thinks that they are ruling, making you miserable, trying to stop your productivity, your effectiveness. Smile, rejoice, because that's kingdom, the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of men. People want to have their way with you. They think they can con control your productivity and your lifestyle. They can stop your progress. They can make you fail. Let me tell you, that's the kingdom of man. It's no match for the kingdom of God, for God is for you. Blessed are you when people persecute you and do all manner of evil against you. For my name's sake, man does not call the shots. God calls the shots, my friend. Rejoice, Jesus said, and be exceedingly glad. So when you refuse to drive on both sides of the lane, some people think that they can live one life and live another life. But when you choose to drive on your side of the lane, and though many times it is narrow, you're not trying to be narrow-minded, but you're living up to the standard that God has called you to live. The Bible promises you, you will be rewarded on earth and you will be rewarded in heaven. So as you go out into your discussion groups, talk about these things, share your experiences, pray for one another who are feeling weak and who are going through a struggle in their life because of their stand for Jesus. I know many young Christians, many young Christians, when they first accepted Jesus Christ, the stand that they had to make, you know, it was difficult, but then you are in a connect group connect with one another, support each other. And let me tell you, let, let them be encouraged, for great is your reward in heaven and great is your reward on earth. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, Jesus said, in Jesus' name. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the study on the Beatitudes. There are more studies that are coming your way. Open up your hearts and your minds to the word of God. God bless you.